communication is super, super important. When we're, uh, if, when we're setting up to make a tag, I want my catchers to start a step in front of home plate. I'm going to show you some video examples shortly of what happens when they start behind. I know there's some coaches out there, some of you may teach this. I actually recommend you don't. Um, start behind and work your way up to the throw. I actually like my catchers to start out in front and then work their way back to make the tag. We don't want the base runner, the main reason being we don't want the base runner to get in between us uh, and the baseball. Uh, and again, I have a video example of what happens uh, to show you what happens when that happens. So, um, stay home. I already gave you that example in the short story that I gave. Um, only stray away from home plate if the throw makes you. Otherwise, um, a step away is all we need. Give that base runner a clear lane to slide into. Um, and we want to be close enough that we receive that throw to come back and make the tag. So don't stray too far, too far away from home. Only do it if the throw forces you to. When we're actually making an attack, performing an attack, uh, when at all possible, when the throw allows, it's important that the catcher's actually moving their feet back to make the tag while they're making the catch. Obviously, we can't obstruct. We can't stand there, be in the way before the ball gets there. But as the ball get, is getting there, it's totally acceptable. Um, I agree that because a lot of young catchers, and some of you probably seen this, there's almost a pause or hesitation to catch the throw, hesitate for a second, and then finally come back where we want to be moving our feet as we're receiving the throw. Sometimes the throw doesn't allow that, sometimes it's offline, we have to go reaching for it. When at all possible, secure the ball with two hands. Sometimes it's a bang bang play, which I'll talk about next, and you do a swipe tap with one hand. But when at all possible, we want to use two hands. I recommend grabbing the outside of the mid. Some uh, will let the ball go in and then grab the ball. Um, a lot of times with the young kids, uh, that gives them opportunity to drop the ball. So the ball goes in, grab the mid, tap with two hands, when at all possible, make sure that ball doesn't come out. As I was saying, sometimes a one hand swipe tag is gonna be necessary. If the throw's a little bit offline, we have to come back and make that tag. We'll have a little bit quicker and more range of motion when we just use one hand, but again, we have that there's a little more chance for the ball to come out. So use two hands whenever possible. Use the one hand swipe when needed. Uh, when at all possible, stay on your feet. This is a big one. I see this all the time. I actually have seen this a lot of times in the, uh, in the big leagues. I'm not going to say catcher's names uh, in case you're a big fan of this catcher, but there's someone in particular that is constantly dropping to his knees as he's making the catch. And then he can't get back to make the tag because he's already on his knees. Right, so we want to stay on our feet because we're going to be more athletic and be able to come back and make the tag. Secondary is sometimes after the tag, the play's not done. We have to spin off the tag and be ready to throw any runners out that might be trying to advance. So uh, when at all possible, stay on your feet. After the tag, and I've already kind of mentioned this, so I'll zip through these ones. Um, if there are runners out there that might be trying to advance or just hit the ball, um, we want to make sure we spin off that tag. Um, a common mistake with young catchers is they'll catch the ball, they'll tag, turn this way, and then they try and turn in, which is going to take a little bit longer. It's going to be a lot quicker to spin off the tag to make that throw. So we want them to spin off the tag when needed. If the uh, tag ends the inning or there's no other runners on base, maybe there's one out, uh, uh, runner third, fly ball, another example I gave earlier. If it uh, ends the inning, there's no other runners who are trying to advance, we're just going to show the ball to the umpire to uh, that we've made that out, especially if on the tag we had to leave our feet and dive and the umpire's looking and checking from the ground, just hold that baseball up and show them that we've, uh, that we've made the tag. Uh, so I'm going to give you a couple examples here on why we keep our mask on. This first play is all out front. I'll be right as the first here. Makes the catch. Here's the throw to the plate, and it's going to be up the line. So even though taking out the catcher is not legal at all levels now, sometimes the contact is inevitable. It, it depends on the direction of the throw and where we go with it. Obviously, I'll throw one up the line to get it, and just that, how the play worked out, you know, just get smoke in the, uh, in the mask. It's a good thing he had his mask on there. The range felt pretty good. It could have been a lot worse if his mask was not. This is another good reason to wear your mask. <laughs> this is, uh, I think his name is Mike Mahoney. Uh, the story is that Sammy Sosa, some of you might remember, came up firing and threw like this cutter to him and he said it hit and kicked back. He had no chance. I guarantee he wished he had his mask on that one. This is a pretty textbook tag play right here. So if you watch, starting a step out from a home plate, adjust to the throw. Put on the tag. I 
pulled this one right off on social media. So. And you're ready to throw if the player hit the ball is trying to engage. I'm not sure what coach is thinking, sending Posey to try to run on Harper there, but uh, again, pretty textbook play. Start a step out in front of I think that's Ramos on that one. Just to the throw. One step in front, adjust to the throw. Jab step back to make the tag. Spin off the tag. And be ready to throw. Here's another example of, uh, uh, of two things. A bang bang play where we're going to do a one hand tag. And then another example of why we want to keep our mask on for plays that we play. If you watch closely, Barnhart just buries his chin and this guy ends up coming up bleeding. If Barnhart had taken his mask off, he might be the one bleeding instead of the runner. Maybe they both are. A really good, quick, bang, bang, athletic play. Receive the throw and tag all in one. Shows no fear. Hands up. Headbutts him right in the chops. This is a great example, and we'll talk about this during the drills as well. We want to uh, make sure our catchers know what to do if there's no chance at the play. So you see he comes out to throw, cuts down the distance, gets to the ball sooner, zips it down to third. If you watch closely, the umpire starts to say safe, but they actually reviewed the play and they called him out. But uh, this is a great example, and prepare your catchers for this. Sometimes there's no chance. We, won't, we don't want them to just give up on the play. They're going to cut down the throw, cut down the distance to the throw, go get it, and make a play somewhere else when needed. So that's a great example of that. Um, we all always need to prepare our catchers as well to be athletes and make tags that are a little bit unorthodox. Um, if you watch closely on this throw, the throw takes uh, Martin to his throwing arm side. He's already rotating in that direction to make the catch. Instead of trying to stop that momentum and come back, he just continues on with the momentum of reaching across to get that throw and reverse spins to make the tag out there. That's important that you practice those with your catchers as well. You'll notice that I break these down quite a bit into different parts. Uh, again, if you get your young catchers to perfect one part and then work your way to progress up to putting it all together, uh, they'll be a lot more proficient at it. So you'll see that we start off with the catch and tag, no spin, just working on receiving the throw. And notice how close I am as well. At first, so you can work on bouncing the ball to them, throw one high, throw one mid-side, throw one back in. Just get up close and work on throwing to different locations so they can work on just receiving the throw, stepping back to make the tag. Then we move into catch, tag, spin to throw. Again, I'll give them a good throw, I'll give them a low throw, a mid-side, a back end, work in all the different locations, all the different examples of stuff that can happen during the game. I'm in close so I can be accurate with my throws and work on each step of the progression. Working on picks could be considered an advanced type of, of training, and you guys are the youth coaches, but it happens in youth ball as well, so we need to prepare our picks. After we work on making the tag and spinning off the throw, then you'll see that they're going to work on, that we work on actually making the throw. Catch, tag, spin, and throw. Notice I backed up now. Instead of sitting on a bucket up close, I'm just about 60 feet away out there by the mound, putting a little more zip on the throws. Some throws backhand side, some throws midhand side. You can even uh, bounce them as well. As you back up to make your longer throws, if you don't feel like making multiple throws or you don't have your infields available, you can always grab a bat and just do some combo tag plays. Um, you see I topped that one right there. There's no problem with, they're gonna get all kinds of throws. Sometimes if you fall, it bounces twice and then it's rolling by the time it gets to the catcher. We wanna be prepared for high throws, coming in hot throws, rolling, uh, rolling throws, top spin throws. You can have them work on receiving that throw and tagging or receiving off the tag and making a throw as well. This is an awesome, uh, and I think uh, Coach Brown showed some of this. I can't remember who it was when I was watching the presentations, but they use the ball as well. This is a great safe alternative to practice tag plays. Instead of having your, your catchers run into each other, your players coming in to, uh, to uh, uh, you know, you don't want to have to lose and get someone hurt just in practice. So rolling a ball. I used to roll those big stability exercise balls. And then I had a lot of catches tagging too high. We want to get them used to tagging low where the, where the runner's going to be sliding into. So I started using a soccer ball or a basketball. Um, ideally, I'll say this, ideally you want to have someone making a throw. He was just starting with ball and glove. It was just a two of us out there filming the videos for you guys. So uh, it was just me rolling the ball and ball and glove for him. But working on a swipe tag and working on a two-hand tag as well. Like 
I said, you want to prepare your catches for if the throw is offline, if there's a bad throw that happens all the time in games. We actually have more bad throws or challenging throws than we do good throws. So this is just an example of him recognizing a bad throw or that he doesn't have a chance to make the play at the plate, coming out, cutting down the distance to the ball, and making the uh, making his throw there. Okay, we're going to move on to force plays now. What to do before, during, and after the force. First things first, like I said on the tag plays, we've got to communicate. Make sure your catchers are communicating. Uh, they might be saying 444, home, 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 whatever terminology you guys use. If they realize that there was a, a bobble or whatever might happen or wasn't a very hard hit ball, they might be yelling 111. But the point is, make sure you're having them, even during the practice, be vocal, be loud, and communicate. Super important. During force plays, the catcher is going to become a first baseman. We want them to put the front. I'm um, sorry, their toes and ball of foot of their right foot on the front edge of the plate. Um, some of you may teach it this way. I highly recommend you don't. I'm going to show you an example why. Some coaches teach start behind and then work your way through and do the drag almost like an infield at turning two. They'll have their left foot step next to the plate, their right foot drags across, and then they go to make that double play throw. In my opinion, that leaves them too close to home plate, more chance for the runner to slide into them. So I like my guys to go out with their front with their right foot on the front edge. Not the heel, by the way, as well. If they put their heel when they step to the ball, their foot comes off the plate, and that should be their main focus, getting that out of the plate. So uh, make sure it's the ball, the foot, and not the heel, so they don't step off when they step to the ball. Uh, already talked about this, kind of got a little ahead of myself. I wouldn't recommend starting behind. Um, sometimes it allows the ball to get in between, I'm sorry, the runner to get in between us and the ball as well, depending on how the play is developing. So uh, starting from actually making the force play. Um, it's super, super important. I'll show you a video example of what happens when, uh, when they don't do it this way. You want your catcher to step to the ball, not to the player. Very, very common mistake is for the catcher to come out if I'm setting up for, to get a throw from the shortstop, and they'll actually step in the direction of the player that's about to throw to them. They have all their weight on that front leg, and the throw's offline. It's really hard to adjust and, and, and go get that bad throw. We get a lot of balls off the end of the glove and go to the backstop. So step to the ball, not to the player. And I'll show you guys examples of that. Uh, when the throw allows, we want our hands close by for a quicker exchange so we can uh, potentially turn that double play. Um, a common mistake with young catchers is they'll have their hand by their side as they step to the ball. Now they have all this distance to cover, longer exchange, slower throw, more chance for the runner to be safe. Um, if the play takes long to develop, which I already kind of touched on, it's up to the catcher to communicate. Give up on that double play, give up on that play to play, it might just be 1-1-1-1-1, or they're going to just focus on getting that play to play, become a first base, and they may end up doing a, a stretch and doing the splits to get that out. We want that guy uh, at home primarily. That's our first focus, if not 1-1-1, one, one, one. and it's important for the catcher again to communicate. Uh, ideal timing on these force plays, rhythm and timing is super important to uh, to get our energy going where we want it to, to get off a good, crisp, uh, solid throw. So the time is going to be as the ball's hitting the mid, that left foot's hitting the ground. So they pop at the same time, and that momentum is going to help us create a throwing lane and potentially turn that double play. But that's how the time is going to be for the force plays. After we actually get that out of the plate, after receiving the throw, uh, if the catcher determines they can turn two, we clear that throwing lane, use a drop step technique, and I'll show you examples of that to create a space away from the runner. We don't want to throw the ball right in the runner. So they use the momentum of stepping to the, uh, to the ball to create that throwing lane and look to turn two. Um, every once in a while, and you need to practice this, I don't think I have a video of this one, but every once in a while the catch will set up for that force play and the throw takes them significantly to their throwing arm side. If I step across, yeah, I go all the way across, um, my momentum's taking me that way, I'm going to stay outside, outside, and throw it to the outside for the, uh, uh, for the first base versus staying to the inside. Um, and we already talked about this again, if there's no play at first. Um, actually, we didn't talk about this, so I can get myself there. If there's no play at first, the catcher determines we cannot get that guy at first. They're going to do a full arm thing, reset their feet, and then look to maybe get the guy at third. The runner going from second to third. If we pull full arm thing and sell that throw, make them think we're throwing, they might round a little bit extra. We might be able to, uh, to back pick them there. And if there's no play at third, then I'm actually even going to back I'm sorry, I'm going to peek over a second as well. And just look for other plays. We don't give up on the play. The point is, don't give up on the play just because there's no double play. Okay? <clears throat> if the throw is offline and there's no chance for not to play, the catcher should go get the throw, block when needed, um, just come up and make sure no one else is going to advance. We don't want to let the ball get to the backstop. 
Here's an example of a lot of you don't start behind. This is that Rizzo slide, so you might be familiar with this play. Notice the catcher is behind, steps to the ball, slides his foot across. Now Rizzo probably still could have got him if he had started in the front edge of the play and stepped, but I think that little extra distance, it probably wouldn't have been such a hard collision. Kind of hurt his leg a little bit there. Everyone was all over Rizzo, but that was a dirty play that you watched closely. He slides right over the top of the play. His body's over the place. It's his legs right now. That's just good hard baseball, in my opinion. Some of you probably debate me on that, but if the catcher was out in front, less chance of that happening. That's the whole point there. This is just a little highlight reel as the fourth place of the play. Keep in mind, there is textbook form, the stuff that we talked about, and then there's the reality of it. You'll see that some guys are a little bit late on their steps. Some guys uh, don't necessarily step directly to the ball. But these are some pretty good examples of what you'll see when you That was a tough one coming right down the third baseline. This is pretty textbook by Yamuto. Uh, he was actually already stepping almost to first right there, but you see him slide step or shuffle step, drop step, whatever you want to call it, to clear some space away. And then there's Salva making the play as well. This is an example of why we don't step to the player. You got to step to the ball, not to the player. <coughs> as you notice, he'll set up before I've let go. He's already starting to step, and then it throws off line, and he's not going to be able to adjust to get over to that. Athletic position looked great, but stepped early, couldn't adjust, ball's going to go to the backstop, and then the run's going to score. So step, step to the ball, not to the player. All right, getting into the drills now. Again, doing picks could, could be considered a, a pretty advanced drill, but it happens in games with your young guys, so you need to practice it. So I get my guys into a lunge position first, just like a first baseman. We'll work on mid-side picks, we'll work on back-end picks. Then I progress into adding the step and pick. So they start an athletic stance and then step to the ball. Work on all the locations. You can throw some mid side, back hand, right at them. After we do the step to pick, then they'll actually progress into where he's going to step and pick. You just do the footwork to throw, and then you're going to get feedback and let them know if they've cleared enough space away from that first baseline to make a clean throw. So again, lunge position first, then step to lunge and pick. Now step to lunge, pick, and get the footwork down. You can probably guess what's next. We'll step to pick and then actually make the throw and go on. Breaking the skill down into all the different parts and sections and things that can happen, and then putting it all together at the end. That was kind of the in-between hop good pick right there. For two-hand scoop uh, versus the, uh, the one-hand grab. Mask on, mask off is an option. I was haven't played for a while. All we had was two piece back when I played, so we almost always threw our two piece off the hockey style and actually stay on. And it's a matter of preference. Bunch toward the middle of the field. Ideally, again, we communicate. Ideally, we want to get our momentum going toward our target, so they're going to do a little bit of a banana root. Obviously, there's going to be situations where the bun ends up right in front of home plate and there's a runner going to, so I'm going to go direct line to it and throw the second. But uh, ideally, we want to get our energy. And this is, again, right, left, field. And now all we do is shuffle step because we already have space away from the first baseline. They don't need to drop step anymore. With that drop step, a lot of times with young catchers, they'll drop step, and then their momentum keeps, they kind of keep floating out toward third or short. We need to make sure they're driving their left knee toward their target, get their weight going where it's supposed to go. Same thing as we already talked about, chest over the ball, face over the ball. I prefer two-hand scoop. Mask on, mask off is optional. Third baseline is a little bit different. I will say this, for those of you coaching the young ones, this third base bump line play is challenging, especially for the young catchers. When I first started coaching the young guys, I said, all right, now we're going to work on the hard one. And then I planted that seed in their head that it's hard. Say it's the fun one. This is the exciting play. You'll see some of the most exciting plays look like shortstops on this play. So just be careful with the terminology that comes out of your mouth when you're teaching this one. So third baseline, direct line to it. Left foot now is a deceleration step that's going to help slow us down and get us in the building position. Right foot plans as we pick up the ball. Pivot and throw. If it's a big guy like myself that did like a swinging bunt, got pulled on a changeup and is trickling out, we might have time to pivot, shuffle, step, and throw. But usually it's just pivot and throw, no extra steps. Uh, got ahead of myself, got to push the clicker. Same thing, chest and face over the top of the ball. We don't want our catcher having to reach for the ball, knock him off balance. It's going to take him longer to get it on the way. Like I keep saying, I prefer two-hand scoop. Mask on, mask off is optional. Here's a textbook play by LaCroix. Bump right up on the, on the chalk. I think that's Aguiar. I almost got ear hold there. He needs to get out of the way.
but you notice the shuffle step and then a little extra drop step to clear the throwing lane and then let it fly. That's pretty much textbook going up the first baseline. You're right. <laughs> Here is a catcher looking like a shortstop. So as I mentioned earlier, ideally we want our catcher to get their momentum and energy and body weight going toward their throw. Sometimes when the buck gets in the no man's land like this, all you can do is spin and fire, be an athlete. Probably is obviously one of the best ever at doing that. Pretty amazing play right there. Let's get into drills. I got a jam. Uh, so bump footwork drill, you can really break down bump plays. Kids will mess up the footwork, and you'd be amazing just the approach to the ball, how messing up the footwork can mess up the entire play. So you notice he's starting with his left foot forward, and all he's doing is working on the rhythm of swinging his back leg through, right left field. Just do the rhythm to the ball first. Now we're doing the rhythm to the ball, pick it up, and drop step. And then you can probably guess what's going to be next. He's going to do the rhythm of the uh, footwork, pick it up, drop step, and throw. Work on all the different locations, bump first baseline, bump middle, bump third. I'll let this one roll through, but I'm going to jam through some of these videos as I see I've only got about nine and a half minutes left and I'm still going to talk about them. So. so here's the third base on left right pivot, grab the ball, then he's going to do the left right pivot, and two of those, and then he'll add in the shuffle step uh, or just the pivot and be ready to throw. I think on this one he shuffles. Oh, that's his pivot throw, the next one he's going to actually shuffle. So breaking it down in parts, ball in place, really simple, and progress your way up. This is ball in place and just going one. So start off with the, uh, the ball just sitting still, working on the rhythm of the movements, make sure on the one in the middle they're getting around it. And then just a pivot fire here. He yeah, actually does a little bit of a shuffle. Ball in place, go two, and then I actually have ball in place and we go three, but to speed up the process, you guys get the idea of what we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. A lot of times the young catchers, when they go out to field a bunt, they do not get their body going in the right direction. Um, on the play at the first baseline, sometimes they don't drop step, so it's a good idea to put something in the way. A lot of times when I'm practicing bunts, I'll stand in the way. So it's just coaching way drill, uh, making sure that his, his momentum is not floating out towards shortstop on the one in the middle, and then his momentum is getting toward first base on this one and not floating out towards third base. So you put something in the way. Then we progress up to where the ball is actually rolling. I like to start behind the catcher and flip from behind, so it's a little bit of a surprise component to it. They're not sure which direction they're going to need to go, and just mix it up each time. Mix up the speed of the bunt, the depth of the bunt, put some close, put some far, put some right on the line, and then make sure you're working on going to all the bases because that happens in the game. So ball rolling, go one, ball rolling, go two, and then there'll be ball rolling, go three. This is, can be considered an advanced technique or advanced play, but this happens in the game. I can't stress that enough. So practice all the different things that are going to happen. So do or die play. Sometimes the ball's on the line. It might be easier to go to the outside like you just saw. Sometimes going to the third baseline. Now, on that play, he'd normally just make the normal footwork, but for the purpose of the camera and the way it was, um, normally the, the slide to the ball at that third baseline is if the ball's kind of in no man's land. Some coaches call it the Bermuda Triangle where bunts go to die kind of thing. Um, I just didn't have enough space on the camera, but sliding like this is usually farther up the line. The kids will get a kick out of practicing that as well. All right, on pop-ups. Try again, but first and foremost, to teach your catchers, you want to make every catch. You want to catch everything. For those of you who follow me on social media, you might have seen that too long ago. I posted that picture. I forget the young man's name, but there was a pop-up in Houston. Uh, they had the shift on. Everyone was over there on the shift for the lefty, and he went out and caught it over at first base. So... Uh, I'm sorry, third base. So my point is, um, the catcher wants to go get the ball every time on a pop-up unless they're called off. Corner infielders have priority order, so if we start to go for a pop-up and promo in the dugouts, we need to listen for our teammates to call us off, and then we'll uh, uh, peel off out of the way. But communication, again, is key. Um, we want them to turn their back to the infield, okay? Uh, the spin put on the ball when it goes up off the bat, the ball's going to break toward the infield unless it's extremely windy. Typically, the ball is going to spin toward the infield, so we want our catcher to turn our back to the infield immediately so the ball is curving into us, not away from us. Uh, find the ball first, then approach. Um, really common mistake with young catchers is the ball's popped up. Everyone goes into freak out mode. Their teammates, their coaches, moms, dads, grandparents in the stands. It's up, it's up, it's up, it's up. And the catcher takes his mask off and just takes off running, not even knowing where it's going. We need to make sure they're standing in control, spin around, and find it first. Mask on, mask off is optional. Like I was saying earlier, um, I was a two-piece guy, and if we ran around for the ball, sometimes those would shift. 
So we typically got the two piece out of the way. One piece with the hockey style, a lot of kids uh, will, will keep the mask on there. Making a catch, we want them to catch it over the midside shoulder or their face, not reach across their body unless they have to. Sometimes it's, it's inevitable, sometimes it's inevitable, and they have to reach across, but ideally we want to catch over the midside. Uh, let the ball come down to them. A common mistake for young catchers is to jab up at the ball. When you get too jabby and stabby, just like receiving, we've got to stay soft, let the ball come down to them. If they're standing still, we want them to use two hands. This is a common mistake for young catchers. They put their hands here and squeeze. That's not two hands. We want the ball to go in and then secure the ball that way. If they're on the run, it's a lot easier to catch with, one, with just the mid. After we make the catch, uh, sometimes if there's a speedy runner at first and the pop up is taken back to the backstop, that runner might try and tag and advance. So uh, if there's runners on the pit advance, we're going to make that catch and then spin around and pick up any runners and just listen for the communication from our team teammates and first basemen. If there are no runners on base, there's no need to throw. Um, we're just going to show the umpire the ball, especially if we ended up uh, diving for it, showing that we made that catch. Right now. Here's a textbook pop-up on this one. Salvi probably could have thrown his mask a little more aggressively out of the way. Spin around, find it. Mask in opposite direction. Right over his forehead. I don't know if your kids need to do a little bit of a, a snap that he did, but that's pretty textbook right there. <laughs> Here's Alfaro keeping his match on. Runs back and makes the basket catch. So depending on the height of the pop up, sometimes they'll leave it on, sometimes they're just comfortable leaving it on, so that's pretty good athletic play there. Here's an example of sometimes a guy tries to tag up. This is Stewart. He's actually got an absolute cannon. Athleticism, the focus. Makes a great catch, spins, fires. One hot laser, the second, he gone. Now, I posted on my social media, you might be able to hear me say, I don't know what's more impressive to catch or to throw, but uh, pretty cool play. I'll let you guys watch it one more time. The athleticism, the focus. Spin, fire. Feel the awareness. So, what happens in a game? You want your catch to practice that. This is a low bunt foul ball. Posey making a nice, good uh, sliding play here. I'll say it again, I can repeat myself, if it happens in a game, you want your catchers to practice it, so mix those in during practice. This one, he's actually not making the catch. If you watch Nino here, the pop-ups down the line, uh, along the fence line, so he's going to go over and help communicate. The ball ended up going out of play, but uh, you notice he starts to break over, he's going to start saying, you got room, you got room, fence, 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 or leave, leave it, whatever you want to say. This is kind of a funny one. Easy, easy, easy way to not step on your mask is just throw it to the umpire. We're going to jam through some of these drills. Um, I'm a big fan of tennis ball bare hand pop-ups. Just like receiving soft hands, we don't want to stab and jab at the ball, let the ball come to them. So you see I'm behind him, just getting a nice, easy underhand flip. I call ball, he spins around, finds it, loses the match, stays soft, and makes that catch. There's no shame in bringing a tennis racket or, or a racquetball racket out to a baseball field. Uh, I've seen a lot of coaches do this. If you uh, don't want to throw over and over and over, Competitive. You want to get some pretty high, tough ones, you can bring out a racket. Same concept, this was just a point of there's no shame to bring in a racket out. So this is pop ups of, um, off of just throwing with the mid on now, we're in baseballs. So a little more challenging, a little more game-like. Find it, lose the mask, right over his face or left shoulder. That was a little bit out front from there. You get the idea there. Um, like I said, have your catchers practice both taking the mask off and keeping the mask on and see which one they prefer. If they have the hockey 
This really isn't a dive. I kind of tease him after this. He just kind of falls, but uh, you get the point there. So working on those low pop-up practices uh, is important. Might be considered advanced. It happens in the game. You want your catch to be ready for it. Um, catching a pop-up and then making the throw again. This typically happens when we have our back to the field. It's done way back by the backstop. There's a speedy runner first, and we need to throw him out. It happens in the game, so we want to practice it. I just showed you a whole bunch of options with me throwing the ball in the air. There's no shame in throwing. The more accurate, you can put it more where you want to. If you're comfortable with it, obviously grabbing a bat, grabbing a fun go is going to be ideal because it's uh, more game life. If you notice when I'm hitting these, I aim in a different direction every time. Sometimes I'm facing the mound, sometimes I'm facing first base, sometimes I'm facing third base, and that's going to make the pop up going in a different direction. 